Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Ben and I'm a self-taught web developer who went from zero to paid full stack in about eight months via the Odin project. And this is one video of a two-part series where I'm gonna give you a rundown of my experience working for two Canadian tech firms, one of them large and one of them small. So I get a couple questions from people asking what's it really like to work in a tech company. So that's the point of these two videos. I will link to the video about working in a small tech company below in the description. But what I have here to sort of guide this conversation is some slides. I just find it far easier to talk with slides and I think it's a bit more visually appealing for you. Let me know if you like the slides uh, or not. But what I'm gonna do is talk about uh, working at a large company today. And these are the things I'm gonna discover, discuss. There's the scope of work, uh, the management, the teams that you might be on, how projects are managed, the developer environment, documentation, your daily workflows, the kind of support you can expect, and the team building. There are probably more things that I could discuss, but I thought this would capture a, uh, a good kind of whole rounded uh, experience for you. And when I say a large company, FreshBooks is based out of Toronto in Canada. It's about, well, like when I was there, it was 500 people or so and there were about 200 developers. Since then, they did go through some layoffs and I think they laid off so far around 80 staff or something like that. So it's a little bit smaller now. But let's just look at uh, the scope of work. So when you do land a role at a large tech company, your scope of work is gonna be different than it would be in a smaller company. Typically, larger companies will focus uh, teams on specific areas of an application. So in the case of FreshBooks, it's uh, basically accounting software. Now it's accounting and payroll. So it allows small business owners to keep track of their accounting and get invoices, get paid, and also uh, issue payroll to their staff. So I was on a team that was responsible for building new features. And while I was there, we were focusing uh, mostly on building out a new payroll integration. Okay, so that all of the work focused on, on one area of the application for new features. But you also might be involved in things like refactoring code. Oftentimes features get built, they weren't built great, or things have changed and they need to be changed. So you might be refactoring existing code as well. You could also just be making improvements to the application uh, as a whole. But generally you'll probably be uh, scoped to a specific area of the application. So your day-to-day and the, the business area and the area of the product that you're working in will be quite similar. You also might support support. So these are obviously the support staff who receive uh, phone calls from users who have issues and they will create a bug and if they can't fix it, they'll probably escalate it to another business area. And in this case, if it is a known bug and it's actually a defect of the, the application, then they'll ex escalate it to a development team and you'll have to work with them to fix that bug. This can actually be really interesting because you don't really know what you're going to get and you get exposed to different areas of the application and you also get to work with real world users in a real world uh, cases. So that's actually quite cool as a developer because you know that that code that you're going to push to fix that bug is helping someone right there and then. And you might also be on call doing this as well. Usually that's for people who have been in the company for a little bit longer and are comfortable with the product and the workflows but uh, that is something that can happen. Sometimes you get paid a bit more for being on call as well, um, and it will come in uh, cycles. So you might be on call one week a month, for example, where you have a little pager that will ding-a-ling, and it could be 3 a.m. and you have to get up and maybe revert a commit or something um, to fix uh, any issues that are in production. You might also get pulled off into uh, one-off projects and committees. In larger companies, that's uh, it depends, you know, junior staff, maybe not, but as you get more experience, you might get pulled off into these projects as well and get to work with different areas and teams within the company. Now, in terms of management, in big companies, you're going to have dedicated individuals who are managers. You're going to have person A, for example, Dave, he is going to be your manager and he's going to do a range of things in his role but really he's gonna be focused on managing projects, managing the deliverables, okay? So there's, let's say a new payroll feature is going to be uh, rolled out in the, uh, in the application. Well, Dave might be tasked with managing all or a part of that rollout of that feature. So it's up to Dave to um, provide the information to his team, his developer team, to work with the product team, 
to figure out what exactly is needed and then make sure the work is passed into uh, the right chunks of work and that this gets assigned on time and if there are any blockers they help uh, remove those blockers. That's kind of the job as, as, uh, for Dave. He is going to lubricate kind of the workflows uh, for developers. Dave's also going to liaise with other areas of the product uh, or the company rather such as in product, product managers, product designers. He's also going to liaise with uh, other levels of management. So directors might, who might be above Dave, who are issuing directives to Dave uh, and his team. Dave will also be in charge of checking in with the team, checking in with individuals, uh, carrying out performance management, and really just helping you get unstuck. And hopefully if the, Dave is a good manager, he'll be kind of motivating you to grow, uh, helping you figure out what your goals might be in your learning and your growth and, and help you chart a course towards those areas. So Dave's really someone who's in your corner, who helps guide you and tells you when you might be going a little off track or when you're doing things really well uh, and, and hopefully makes your experience at the company um, a, a pleasant one. So the teams in a larger company, well, there's gonna be lots of them because there's lots of people and people get organized into teams. So you're going to have teams with more specialized skill sets, for example. Uh, you're going to have within your own team, you might have a principal engineer, you might have senior engineers, uh, mid-level engineers and junior engineers. So you're going to have the whole range of experience and technical abilities within the team. And this, is, this can be a great experience for you coming in new because you get to learn from all of these people. And on the product side, you're going to have management, you're going to have designers, all right, product managers, product designers, and you get to work with those people too because you may be building something and you have a question for them because it hasn't been covered in uh, the designs that they've, they've given you and any product facing design questions should go to product first to make sure that what you're building is appropriate. So you get to kind of cross uh, pollinate with different teams as well. Uh, and in management, there's um, going to be directors, managers, kind of, you know, the whole hierarchy all the way up to the C-suite. And in the, the, uh, the framework that I was under, we had a large team that was about 10 developers. It was, they were all remote, spread across the world, but we were split into two pods. And so I was in a pod of about five developers and then we were tasked with certain chunks of work. We had, I think, two seniors, or it was maybe it was three seniors, uh, a mid-level developer and myself who was an intern, but I was essentially operating at the level of a you know, contract or junior level at that point um, at FreshBooks. Uh, so project management in a large company is going to be a bit, more, a bit more robust, a bit more organized. You're probably going to be working under some framework like the Agile framework. That's what I was working under at FreshBooks. And this uh, chunks work up. So if products say we need to build a new payroll feature, what exactly does that look like? It's going to be a whole load of descriptions of what a user should be able to do. Uh, and then development need to figure out, okay, what do we need to develop in order to meet those acceptance criteria? And usually work is kind of chunked into epics, which is just a large kind of high level story with a big body of work within it. And then each epic is going to have specific pieces of coding tasks broken down into uh, issues or tickets that are called stories. And generally each story is going to be scored a certain number of points, depending on range of criteria but generally how long it might take you or how complex the task is and it's based on the Fibonacci uh, sequence which means nothing here but it's just a little tidbit and uh, the more complex longer uh, tasks will be scored higher and generally each sprint which is a chunk of work in this case was two weeks long uh, a developer was expected to complete about 10 story points okay so there it was just a way to qualify or quantify uh, the complexity of a task and then easily determine how much or kind of set the bar of where you should be meeting each two-week sprint and then these sprints are split up or, or organized with meetings called ceremonies it's just a fancy word for a meeting and the main meetings in a in a agile framework are for sprint planning that's where you all get together and say okay this is the chunk of work that we need to do let's assign some story points to this uh, and, and figure out what the score is for each of these these stories uh, and then you'll figure out um, you kind of just the way we did it we just discussed what we needed to get done and then after the fact 
you will go and pull the stories or the tickets that you are going to work on into your own queue. The downside of that is if you don't go there quickly, you get the crappier tickets or the harder ones or the ones that are less enjoyable to work with. And there's no kind of assignment ongoing of like uh, divvying out an equal or fair number of sorts of tickets. I guess that's just not the way to think about it. But I ended up not knowing that was the case when I when I joined and I ended up uh, getting left with some really not great tickets for the level that I was at. Um, so that's something to bear in mind if you ever get caught up in that situation. Your manager should help you out in that situation and have some work set back for you. Mine didn't. I kind of just had to uh, sink or swim and figure things out for myself. But uh, that's okay. Sprint planning is the organizing of the work. Then once the sprint started, you have daily stand ups where you all just get together every day for 10 minutes or whatever it is. And each person just goes around and says, this is what I'm working on. Uh, this is what I intend to do today. If you have any blockers, this is the time to bring it up and say, I don't know how to do this or this issue or ticket is blocking mine. And then it will uh, help spark some discussion there so you can get unblocked and keep working. And then at the end of the two weeks, you have your sprint review. So this is the whole point of this is just to go over, share the work that was done, uh, share how many story points were, uh, were completed and kind of map your way through to your end goal of completing that epic. So it's just a quick review of how the last two weeks went. And then you have a retrospective, which is more about, let's say, uh, hmm, a touchy feely way of just saying, OK, how did things go? Were there any issues with the way we did the work this last two weeks? Uh, what went really well? What could we keep doing? What are the risks that we should be aware of? And it's a really good way. I say touchy feely, but it's it's only because it's the most sort of human part of development is where you actually say, oh, okay, I felt like this went that way and it could have gone this way. For example, you know, you very rarely get to bring your your thoughts and feelings into the development process, and this is a time to do it. And I think it's a really valuable way to uh, see what's going well and tweak. Uh, things that aren't going very well so that you can improve uh, systems and processes. Uh, okay, dev environment. So your dev environment in a big company is probably going to be containerized, meaning it's going to be running in something like Docker. Uh, that's what it was uh, the case at FreshBooks. And what that allows you to do is just basically have a whole load of developers around the world on different machines being able to run the same software without having any issues of installing dependencies or things that are needed. Um, Docker, because it's containerized, everything's installed within these containers. And all you have to do then is download those images and containers and you just up and running. Uh, okay, so DevOps dedicated teams. Yeah, in a big company, you're going to have people who are dedicated teams, dedicated to figuring out how do we get Docker up and running? How do we get this development environment up and running on as many people's machines as possible with the least amount of issues as possible? And that's great because it means that a lot of the kinks should be ironed out for you before you get there. You're not going to have to worry too much about getting things working on your machine. It should be fairly plug and play with a few things, tweaks here and there that you might have to overcome. But generally, it's all going to be thought out and sorted for you, which is really nice, especially when you're new to development, to come into a team with really well thought out uh, DevOps and, and systems in place. And there's probably a CI CD, so continuous integration, continuous delivery or continuous deployment is probably in place. And that just means that whenever you push changes up uh, and make a pull request, there should be a big test suite that runs to make sure that the app doesn't crash uh, or break in certain areas. It could be based on the code that you pushed up. And then if it's approved and you merge it into that branch, then uh, depending on how they manage things in the, in the uh, DevOps, world they might push that directly to main or at least it'll be ready for then someone to, to deploy uh, so that's nice as well it takes a lot of the thinking or heavy lifting of having to work with production environment away from you as a developer you just write the code you make sure that it works you push it up someone else takes care of production and that is a very relaxing thought as a developer because i don't like having to deal with production in any case uh, too many things can go wrong. You know, if, if you do make a mistake, you could cost the business a lot of money and reputation by messing that up. So it's great that that's all handled for you. Documentation. So in a large company, you're probably going to have a lot of documentation. And this will range from everything from development 
to HR, right? You should be able to go somewhere. They've probably got some somewhere in the cloud where you can click and there's a whole uh, Wikipedia or library of documentation that you can access. And this is really useful for, again, when you're setting up your development environment, when you're uh, working on certain areas of an application or, or features where you might need to access production data, for example, and you need to figure out how to connect to it. There's going to be documentation there. It's all done for you uh, before, so you can just follow that and you know not be stumbled or uh, stumbling or blocked. Uh, usually on the product itself, there's going to be a lot of justifications for why certain decisions were made in the product. And that's just nice to read as a nice to know piece of information. It's not a need to know necessarily. But the more you understand about the thinking behind product decisions, I think the more it uh, helps you as a developer know why you're building certain things and, and why they should be built certain ways. There's going to be engineering notes. And now this is obviously more the technical notes around uh, certain uh, technology choices, why certain ones are chosen, why certain ones weren't chosen, what might be coming in the future, what might be being phased out, uh, certain ways to write your code and organize your logic. For example, at FreshBooks, there was a very strong focus on uh, domain-driven design. And um, th th there's going to be a lot more documentation on this as well to help you in your interest as a developer. And the level of documentation at... Uh, FreshBooks was, was way more than it is at this small company that I'm at now. And I have a note here, Think C4. So they were even going as far as uh, documenting uh, applications on a C4 using the C4 framework, which goes all the way from a very high level, um, just kind of single box with a little uh, label and a line to another one, which just shows you kind of the high level uh, communication between applications all the way down to sort of the model class level. If you want to look up, uh, documentation and diagrams in, in more detail, I do recommend looking up the C4 method. It's pretty interesting. And I think it's a really intuitive way to map out uh, applications. And yeah, don't forget Slack. Slack is actually a really useful resource. Uh, for me, when I was at FreshBooks, I would type a string, like a query into Slack. And, you know, for example, uh, I, I would paste an error into, into Slack and I would get all of the past history of all of the people that have discussed that particular error in Slack in, in public uh, channels. So, you know, it was going back several years. That's a big wealth of uh, information that I had access to. And it got me unstuck multiple times. So definitely don't forget Slack. Okay, your daily workflows in a large company are going to be quite different to smaller ones. There, there's going to be more meetings. So you've got the whole agile framework and all the meetings that I explained that you'll be a part of there. Then you're going to, at FreshBooks, we had engineering meetings. So I don't remember the frequency, but this was a time we got together. Every engineer, 200 odd people were expected to phone in. And it was an hour of just discussing product, big, bigger level uh, engineering and product goals. Um, and then there's company-wide meetings as well, just to give updates on things, as well as when there were layoffs, they'd have a company-wide meeting, which kind of sucks. Uh, so there's a lot more meetings taking up your time. The number of development hours that you will get to spend is really going to vary depending on your title. So senior developers probably only get an hour or two in a day. They're going to spend a lot more time working with management, working with product to figure out uh, and scope areas of work. They're also going to be helping other people solve problems who are stuck. And so the actual code that they write might be quite a bit less or the amount of time they spend writing their, you know, focused on their own task might be quite a bit less than someone who's a mid-level or a junior. For me, as a, as a junior or an intern there, it was about, so on average, probably five hours a day I got to spend focused on my code. The rest of the time was either reading documentation, attending meetings, or some other, you know, working on some other side project with uh, another developer or something like that. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time pairing with the senior when I was stuck, and that, that was definitely very useful. In terms of the projects that I worked on at FreshBooks, so um, I was working mostly or entirely in Python on the back end, mostly in Flask, uh, sometimes in Django. And a lot of the time there, I was building in small checks, uh, you know, small flags on, on features to make sure certain values were being checked. I was building complete endpoints for the payroll feature. Uh, that were taking information from the front end and then sending that to a payroll provider called Gusto uh, and making sure that we were handling that information properly as, as required. 
uh, integrated a new role across many applications for a new accountant hub role that they had. I did some front-end work, so that was in Ember.js mostly, uh, so I'm running in JavaScript and building new team tables, uh, building new designs for that, and, and some other smaller stuff as well, tweaking things here and there, fixing bugs. Uh, yeah, and, and generally uh, some bigger bugs that I was fixing, helping support as well. Uh, my experience at FreshBooks was a little challenging because there wasn't like a piece of work that was perfectly carved off for an intern. It was more like, go go find your own work. Here's a backlog and find stuff you think you can do. And then once I got warmed up there and went through a hell of a time on one of my tickets, then I started contributing more and picking tickets from the actual sprints uh, as well. So I had to really work for it, but um, I, I got there in the end. I mean, it's it depends on who you get as a manager, I think. So large companies will have a lot more support for you. There's just more people. So there's more people to ask questions from, more developers, uh, more product staff, more managers, more HR. Uh, you know, you got your seniors, your principals. There's tons of people that if you are proactive and you're good at building networks and relationships, you will have tons of people who will be willing and able to help you out when you're stuck and just willing and able to teach you stuff. So that is a really cool part about working in a large company. Uh, and then, yeah, you have a big HR team as well. So you know, all of that stuff to do with vacation, benefits, all of that, uh, it's all taken care of by a dedicated team. So you get responses very quickly. IT, tech support, making your laptop power supply isn't doing the job it's supposed to, or you need a new one, for example. All those things are taken care of. So it, there's, it's very easy to get things fixed when you're in a, in a larger company, I think. Team building, my experience at FreshBooks, it was good. Uh, I mean, there were more team meetings. Uh, obviously, it's a much bigger team, so you don't get to know everybody, but the people that you work with every day or, or more regularly, you get to meet with uh, and build relationships. We got to play games bi-weekly for an hour in the mornings just to help you know, build a remote team. I think it was actually a really good way to, to build relationships. Uh, and then we had an on-site as well, which was really fun. Uh, I got to go to uh, Niagara Falls and we spent uh, two days there in a hotel conference uh, style setting where we had talks, discussions, breakout groups, and then some fun activities as well. Good dinners, lunches, open bar, and you know, going to see the, the falls and all that kind of stuff. And that was a great way for, for me to build relationships with my team, which made working with them remotely so much easier because you knew that person. You could hit them up in Slack and ask them a question and there's no issues there. You, you, you'd you built a rapport in person. So I think those on-sites are really, really valuable for that. Okay, last two slides here. So pros. What are the pros of working in a large company? I think with there being more people uh, and with there being expectations of onboarding new staff uh, takes time, there's less pressure to be productive right away. So you can kind of, there's less focus on you as an individual because there are more people, but there's also more support, more structure in place to just sort of help ease you in. There's a full onboarding process. For example, at Freshworks, there's a whole week where you go through if you're a full-time staff. I went through like a self-paced thing as an intern. It took me like three days. And then you just ease in, pick something really simple, no high expectations. And, and that's nice because you, there's, there's, you don't feel as stressed in that first week or two. Um, like I said, you've got more support, more people to ask questions to, more documentation to read. Uh, there's maybe more perks. You might get stock options. You might get RRSP contributions, or if you're in the States, the 401k match. Uh, you might get an office uh, or health spend account where you, you get a little bit every month to, to, to spend on stuff. And you really get to learn from many other people as well. I, I think that's one of the best things that I took away from FreshBooks, just the number of people and how much knowledge there was out there and how willing people were to, to help impart their knowledge onto me. Um, I, I think it's really cool to have experience with a big system, a uh, big application, and seeing, in this case, it was a massive front end that managed the whole front end, but then on the back end, it was just a whole lot of microsystems, like 50 of them, uh, all distributed. And it was interesting getting to work in each of these different systems and figuring out how they talk to each other and what's responsible for what. Uh, and, and just being able to problem solve in, in different systems was, I think, a really good uh, introduction to web development. And I don't know about pay. I think it really depends on the company and, and the city and the country that you are in. 
Uh, at Freshbrooks, the pay seemed to be okay to standards. But what I have seen at bigger companies is they're generally more likely to tether their pay to certain standards. And we'll get to that in the cons here. So some of the things I didn't like about a big company is there's less variety in the work. You're siloed or scoped to a certain area of the application. Pray that you have a good team. Pray that you have people that you enjoy working with. Because if you don't and you have all these, you know, a number of people that you have to work with on a daily basis that are challenging to work with, that's just going to make your life suck. So, you know, that's less about the company, more about the people that they hire. There are tight deadlines because it's a bigger company, bigger budgets. A lot of tech companies, especially the bigger ones, the unicorn status ones, they have a ton of debt. So they are under the knife, under pressure to increase revenue, to increase shareholder value. So there are tight deadlines and, and deliverables. And that puts a lot of pressure that comes down from the C-suite down to management. And then the management generally is supposed to hold that pressure off of developers. But sometimes that pressure does fall onto developers and that can be tough. There is layoff risk. Uh, while I was at FreshBooks, there were layoffs and it was awful. I was an intern at the time. I was in my second contract with them and we got an email just saying, oh, some things are changing. And this, you know, it was from the CEO who never emails the entire company. You start to, you get that email in your inbox like, oh no, am I going to get let go? What's happening? People then eventually get let go and you didn't get let go, but you're still around. Now morale is just down. Everybody's uh, upset, frustrated, concerned, and, and all of these emotions and feelings, people were just having to take time off work. And you're questioning the back of your mind, how, you know, what's my longevity here? And I did get offered an extension contract with FreshBooks, but I declined purely because I didn't want to operate in an environment where layoffs are happening. I'd, I'd seen morale just go down like this, and it wasn't somewhere I wanted to be. So that is a risk with, with bigger companies who are in a ton of debt. So it's probably a good idea to understand the financials and ask questions about financials of a company if you're interviewing with them. In, yeah, in bigger companies, you do have less autonomy. You're kind of more of a, a smaller part of a, a bigger team. So, you, you, you know, if you want something to go a certain way, you have to convince other people. There's a lot more people to convince and there's a lot more red tape and bureaucracy around these kinds of things. So it can be really hard for that purpose. And I just found that Lots of meetings, lots of bureaucracy, it impeded development process. So for, you know, instead of being able to dedicate seven hours a day into development, you might only get four hours a day because the rest of the time you are in meetings or you start developing and then something comes up and then you have to stop. And then you have that overhead of context switching where you're now trying to figure out, okay, where was I again? This all takes time. So a lot of that stuff impedes the uh, the. the the fluidity of development, I find. You can feel like you're a small cog in a big wheel. I mean, that's just, I think, the same in any big company. Um, if you join when they're late, your stock options might not be worth that much. Uh, depends, you know, then you're worrying about, are these people who are going to go public? And you're kind of carrying this extra burden on in the back of your mind as well of like, oh, well, you know, we're not going public this year. We were supposed to be going public this year. No, we're not. Now my stock options are worth less. And all this kind of stuff. I mean, th this is an aside. It's kind of a nice problem to have, but it's something to consider because it happened when I was at FreshBooks to, pe to people. Okay, Whew. to end on that note, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I wanted to end a bit more positively than that, but I also wanted to give you a very truth and honest uh, account of what my uh, experience and perceptions were working in a, a larger company. It's a long video, so I'm gonna split the other one uh, of working in a smaller company into the second video. If you enjoyed this video, please do like, uh, consider subscribing, leaving a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. If there's anything else you thought I missed, anything you agree with, disagree with, I'd really like to hear from you. Uh, let's me know that my content is also useful as well when people engage with it. So please do consider doing that and I will catch you in the next one. Have a good one.